Hello all, uh, it's me, Will here, Prehistoric Connection here. Uh, I bid to welcome folks new and old to a special video that I do every year, the Channel Rewind. 2023 was kind of a quiet yet successful year for me, and since the last Channel Rewind of 2022, uh, I now have over 700 subscribers. Uh, well, also since 2023 has concluded. And that means I have approximately 200 new subscribers at the time of recording, which is crazy to think about. And also at the time of recording, there's a total of 120,000 views on my channel across all of my videos, which is uh, which is a jump from the last uh, amount that it was from 2023. We've also garnered approximately 4.2 thousand minutes in watch time in 2023 and overall the growth is pretty good I'm very happy we have grown overall and we have new members that's something very big for a small content creator like myself and I'm just pretty much very uh, grateful for all of it really so yeah every one of you out of the now 700 plus subscribed makes a huge impact on how I view uh, my journey on YouTube, how far I've traveled on this journey on YouTube discussing paleontology. Um, I've never had this many subscribers before on a single YouTube channel, and it seems like the only way is up. So really, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I've, I've been looking at that number for a bit on and off now, and uh, the support that I've gotten over uh, the few past few months, it's it's been great, and I'm just happy everyone has sticked by my side for this uh, this period of time. And going forward, I hope that continues. I sincerely want to become a paleontologist. I want a PhD by the end of all of this, uh, and it's to the point that I've been conducting a lot of academic research with my advisor and another colleague uh, from the end of last year. I should mention here that I've changed my opinion on if I consider myself, uh, truly consider myself as a paleontologist. I don't necessarily do that anymore. I consider myself a, a, a paleontologist in training, and what that means is I'm a student of paleontology training to become one. Uh, uh, there's, there's like two major reasons why I, I do this now. Uh, firstly, the path to becoming a paleontologist is, uh, it's arduous and long and it takes a lot of work. A lot of it has to do with research and coming up with your own original ideas and challenging ones that are currently in circulation in the current state of, of paleontology. So. That's a big reason why I don't necessarily consider myself a paleontologist and only a paleontologist in training. I've just only begun to scratch the surface of that kind of outlook and that attitude towards how I should progress in paleontology. Uh, the second reason why I don't consider myself entirely a paleontologist and only a paleontologist in training is because uh, in 2023, I got a lot of new experience. In the field of paleontology, I was funded by the National Science Foundation to continue my research at my university, and I also went and did field work out in the Western United States for the first time, and that was a really unique and impactful experience. I now look at the field very differently from well, mainly a combination of both of these experiences that I had over the summer. It challenged my critical thinking skills a lot and my framework that I use in paleontology, and that's a big reason why I've reconsidered my position of growth. And that's a big reason why I don't consider myself a paleontologist. Sure, people are always constantly learning. Uh, that's the nature of us humans. However, to call yourself truly an expert is something that requires a lot of time. It requires a lot of work to get to that point where you can confidently call yourself an expert in something. And these are the main reasons why I only call myself a paleontologist in training. I still call myself a scientist. I strongly consider myself a scientist in public settings and especially 
uh, with stuff like academic research that I do and also my abilities to do science communication, albeit sometimes I feel like they can be better, uh, but I mean, you're always learning. You're always trying to get more and more skills under your belt. You're trying to articulate yourself in a way where you can best express the science you do, the knowledge you know overall, and that's only what I hope for going forward, both on YouTube and also in my career in paleontology. With that out the way, in this video, like the prior Channel Rewind, I'll be going over the five best videos of this year. Stay tuned as there will also be a sort of tribute style end to this video as a treat for everyone watching. To elaborate, I went to the Galapagos to study abroad as my last video discussed. I've then uh, decided to share a chunk of those findings here from my studying abroad, uh, mainly the geology and the uh, faunal assemblages and, and floral assemblages, and that'll be like in a kind of montage type setting at the end of the video. You can skip to the end to check it out, or if you're interested in watching the five best videos of this uh, year, 2023, as you look back on that from 2024, uh, you can just watch the, the way through. So without further ado, here are the five best performing videos of the Prehistoric Connection from 2023. So the first video I'd like to discuss is uh, Pele Rewind March 2023, Dinosaur Lips, Air Sac, and Ichthysaurian Origins, Biomechanics, and more. This video is currently at two and a half thousand views, roughly. And uh, this video was honestly pretty, pretty great overall. I feel like I did a solid job of covering the material the process of gathering the information needed to make uh march 2023 for pilly rewind uh really just stemmed from pdfs that i've downloaded throughout the year so all i really had to do was just google march 2023 into my well google drive search uh for a keyword that being march 2023 and just picking out a good amount for the video runtime that I could use and uh, a big a big reason why I wanted to pick March was just to talk about a lot of important uh, papers that came out in that month uh, especially stuff like the dinosaur lips paper a lot of like big idea papers it was just great collaborating with other people in general very thankful for that opportunity and I've said this before but I feel like collaboration is just something that is underused in paleontology videos in general. I like collaborating a, a lot. I like doing things with other people who also do paleontology at any given level. It's, in my opinion, more fun that way, the content creation process. And it seemed like a lot of people have uh, enjoyed the video itself. Besides like minor pronunciation issues, which I'm, I'm sorry, I'm human, I make, mis I make mistakes, uh, but I'll try my best to be better in situations like those. In the second spot, I've decided to go with the Kahoot videos that I made. The most recent one got 134 views, and the first one I ever made got over 200 views. And this kind of goes back to collaboration. Uh, I mainly did this for fun, this upload. I asked my Discord server, hey, would you guys be interested in participating in a paleontology kahoot that I would be making? And um, it went over pretty well, I would say. I'd feel, I feel like I went a little intense <laughs> on uh, the, the, the more later one that I would do, the Nightmare Kahoot. Uh, that I feel like I could have done a lot better with in, in terms of giving people time to actually answer the questions. And I feel like videos like that uh, were just very fun to record. It wasn't a ton of rocket science <laughs> uh, behind the editing. And I've even been watching other YouTube creators, not necessarily paleontology oriented, that do just interactions with their audiences and they make video ideas surrounding that and that's something that I really want to explore more. So I do hope to make more videos like the Paleontology Cahoots, 
there is at the moment one in the pipeline, but the Kahoot was not done by me. Uh, that should be a very interesting upload once it actually comes out. I'm currently working on other projects that have a higher priority, but uh, one day, yes, it will be out on the channel. So the third spot goes to Paleofax episode 11, Boneheads. So this is a series that I do for just covering uh, prehistoric animals. At the moment, I am modeling it off specimens from my local museum. If you don't know, uh, I am stationed out in New York City and Long Island. I go to Long Island for university and uh, <clears throat> having the American Museum of Natural History in your backyard is a powerful tool. I went to the museum to get footage of their Pachycephalosaurus uh, and Stegosaurus on display. I got some footage of that, which was great. It's something that I mentioned back in Rewind 2022 on this channel where uh, I mentioned I wanted to get more museum footage and use that. I know other creators that I look up to and watch, they do a lot of that kind of stuff. It, it brings a really nice vibe to the video that I have in my own style that I want to try and do. And uh, well, I'm not too sure on when the next paleo effects episode would will, will come out. Again, I just have a lot of stuff that I'm working on at the moment. But uh, I just hope I can just make more uh, organism based content, just videos talking about a single organism or two. Oh yeah, and concerning the Paleofax episode 11 upload, I also use the Path of Titans video game just to just uh, record a, a footage of just the model of the Pachycephalosaurus in-game, uh, and that was nice. And it seems like a lot of you people just love that kind of stuff, so again, I'm gonna make sure to keep on doing that for everyone. Uh, fourth uh, upload that I would like to talk about is Devonian. Uh, so this was a long awaited major video production, a content format that I have chose to make extinct on the channel. And concerning its discussion of the Devonian, I feel like for the runtime and what I've attempted to cover in that video, it was it was fairly comprehensive. I remember first like watching Trey the Explainer, uh, I think in the Dunkley Osteus paleo profile video where uh, Trey is talking about the arms race and and what the placoderms were doing in that arms race. It partially served as the inspiration for my Devonian video. The main reason why videos like Devonian are not going to happen in the future uh, at least concerning major video productions. Again, runtime, that's something I'm still working on. It took too long to make with everything else that I wanted to make. I would much rather make videos that were more compact, uh, 10 minutes the most, perhaps. There's nothing wrong with being comprehensive in your video. Big idea, zooming in, zooming out on that to kind of look at every aspect of it. There's nothing wrong with that, but the runtime you dedicate to this sort of thing, I think is the main challenge at, at heart here. Concerning it being one of the last major video productions, major uh, video productions just in general, I feel like it did a very good job at what it was accomplishing or trying to accomplish. It saddens me a little that I can't make these kinds of videos anymore, but well, it's a nice relic from the past, and I'm happy to be talking about it with everyone uh, today. So right before we go into the Galapagos montage that will close out this video, I'll also mention that I have some new music uh, that I've been using in my videos from a, a release from last year of 2023, as this rewind talks about. Uh, the album is called Volume Alpha. If you'd like to check that out, it is in the description below at my SoundCloud and Bandcamp. Uh, there will also be another music project uh, this year, 2024. Um, so I'll have more new music to utilize in my videos with my Paleontology the Album uh, music, as well as my Mount Ignis and Of Northern Men soundtracks. 
enjoy this montage from my time in the Galapagos. See you all in the next upload on this channel.